Dear students, in this module, we're going to look at large-scale proteomics and its applications in the academia and industry. For that, we need to understand that peptides that are injected into the mass spectrometer's chamber is an extremely complex mixture. It contains thousands of peptides and the mass spectrometer sorts each of these peptides by their molecular weight. Now, if you have injected a peptide that has been digested previously, then the peptide mix can go to as high as a, a number as 300 to 400,000 peptides in the mass spectrometer's chamber. This is a very large number of molecules. And remember, this is the molecular type, that is the type of peptides, not the number of peptides. So the number of peptides for each type is also very large. In top-down proteomics, we have the whole protein that is analyzed. But imagine if you have a sample from a patient, it may contain thousands of proteins. And once you inject that sample into the mass spectrometer, the mass spectrometer is going to analyze that for you. So, People who are working with proteomics and ha have done a lot of experiments have actually seen that it is almost impossible to analyze all of these peptides and all of these proteins in a single experiment. So in order to analyze the peptides and the proteins that are there in a given sample, we have developed an optimized mass spectrometry technique. So this technique is useful for performing large-scale proteomics. Before I get into the technique, I want to apprise you that in any large-scale proteomics or LSP experiment, several peptides are redundant. Actually, most of the peptides are redundant. By redundancy, I mean that those peptides are not giving us a capability to identify between different proteins. So essentially they exist in several proteins. So even if you have the sequence for this peptide or the molecular weight for this peptide, it cannot help you to differentiate between the different proteins from the database. Imagine a situation where you have a peptide that can singularly describe a specific protein. This will help you to identify that protein as well. Now, if this were the situation, you would need hundreds of thousands of specific peptides that are uniquely present in each of those proteins. But that is also very difficult. In order for us to have these peptides that are there, which can singularly identify proteins, we face a lot of difficulty. But the problem gets easier by compromising on the fact that if one peptide helps us to shortlist a small number of proteins, then the peptide is important as well. Even though it cannot help us to identify one specific protein, but if it can help us to identify a very small number of proteins, then we, we can further search those small list the number of pro, uh, candidate proteins to arrive at the actual protein or peptide. So the idea is to make a compromise between sequence coverage and the uh, sample coverage. Please note that if you have such a peptide, then that peptide will be small and will not be giving you the entire sequence coverage. In the large-scale proteomics experiments, the technique as far as it goes is that we transfer the peptides into the mass spectrometer chamber and we analyze them one by one. So we have the sample injected and we take it into the mass analysis chamber one at a time. Of course, if the number of peptides in the chamber is large, so this will take a, a long time. But now there are these automated processes in which a peptide is taken for measurement and then the next peptide is taken for measurement in an automated way. 
so the work that is required to take this experiment forward is reduced. Note that this necessitates that the one specific peptide is selected at a time and that the same peptide is not made twice. The step by step of the technique is given as follows. So the instrument that is the mass spectrometer, it shifts between MS1 and MS2 modes here. So first you do the MS1 for the whole peptide followed by its fragmentation and MS2. So once this peptide A, let's say peptide A is analyzed and you select some other peptide or peptide B. Once you have finished peptide B with MS and MSMS, then you move to peptide C and so on and so forth. The three most intense peaks are chosen for MSMS analysis. So this would mean that the intense peaks that are there are confident peaks and that molecule is definitely present in the sample. So after the initial MS scan, an MSMS spectrum from the peptide A is obtained by selectively fragmenting this peptide only. And next, the peptide B, as I was just mentioning, is selected and the MS, MS is also performed on it, followed by some other peptide or peptide C and so on and so forth. Once all of these peptides A, B and C, that is the high quality peptides are processed, the next batch of peptides is inducted for analysis. This cycle repeats until you have analyzed the entire sample. So in conclusion, for large scale proteomics, wherein you are trying to analyze an entire protein mix or a peptide digest, you follow MS1 with MS2 for a specific peptide, followed by another peptide, followed by another peptide. And in this way, you do all the peptides that are there in the sample. You do MS1 and MS2 and you arrive at their molecular weights. So in this way, dear students, you can analyze pathological samples from the patients or the research laboratory and do mass spectrometry and identify which proteins are there in the sample.